one of the reasons that you're all here today is to become more familiar with the Community Improvement Initiative. And let me just, um, on the agenda now, we're going to give you some of that background, but let me just tell you that this is our official second year, we're going into the official second year of the Community Improvement Initiative. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about where the idea kind of came from, and then Kendra's going to join me up here, and then she's going to go over the application and that actual process as to how you complete um, that application for this initiative. Um, but let me just say that, you know, going back really quickly to one of the slides that Brian shared with you, you know, we talked about the mission statement of the Community Foundation, and actually, we just revised our mission statement. Not that our mission statement didn't really say what we did in the community, but we think that this is more succinct and really hits to some of the key areas or key things that we do within the community. And one of the things that we're here to talk about today is how the Community Foundation helps community initiatives to come to life now and forever, okay? So I know a number of you in this room, you represent organizations, municipalities, um, neighborhoods maybe in some cases, and you may feel that, gosh, there are so many things that we could do, or I want to do in Saginaw, this place that I call home. But sometimes people feel um, that they're able to follow through with some of those activities, mainly because they feel that they're not empowered to do so, they may feel that they don't have the financials to, to complete that, whatever the case may be. But through our leadership role and our convening role, because really we're convening all of you here today, because obviously you wouldn't be here today if you didn't have a passion. Whether it's a passion for what you do for your organization, or more importantly, what you do in this community of Saginaw County. Okay? So once again, to fulfill our mission, we feel that this initiative that we're presenting to you today allows us to fulfill a big part of our mission here at the Saginaw County. So a little background on the Community Improvement Initiative. Um, you have to know a few years ago, Dow Chemical Company came to actually the three community foundations in the region and said, you know, we'd like to partner with you. We'd like to partner with each of the community foundations to do a major neighborhood revitalization blitz in conjunction with Habitat for Humanity. Now little did we know, we, we thought that Dow, you know, we all know is one of the major and biggest employers in our region, of course, they would have all the monies necessary to complete or um, do this whole neighborhood revitalization project. But they thought it was really a good opportunity, not only for community foundations to get involved, but to promote that idea of community involvement. So not only did they come to us, because they did come to us and ask if we would put forward some money, even though they could probably pay for it all, but they thought, they thought that that would be one way of the community foundations contributing towards the cause. But then also, it was as community foundations, once again, that we can promote that whole community boundedness that can really make something big, like neighborhood revitalization, really be successful. So in Saginaw County, the area that Dow Chemical chose was the North Moore area, okay? Um, across from, um, some of you know Weiss, um, right by North Moore Park, or North Moore, that whole neighborhood of, um, well, there's Woodbridge, there's Dyendorfer Woods and so forth, but over there in the Northmore neighborhood, it was, um, which is comprised of many different uh, homes and streets, that Dow Chemical felt that that would be a good place to really get community involvement. So they got Habitat involved in Sagan County, and we chose, or I should say they chose, a handful of homes. And Dow Chemical employees were involved as far as actually working out in the neighborhood, and then also community members got involved. But I have to tell you that when that day took place, well, I should say not even day, but a lot of it did take place in one day, but they impacted, I mean, a number of homes, not only because of the money that Dow Chemical and the Community Foundation contributed, but there are a number of individuals in that neighborhood that saw how these houses being fixed. They came outside and said, oh my gosh, I can't have my house look the way it looks with this, these other homes being fixed up. So other people came out and said, well, I'm going to do something in my own house. So it was really that motivation that really made that that project a huge success. But when we saw, I mean, we, we contributed $50,000 to the overall project. But you have to know that it wasn't really the money that we felt that made the difference. It was the, the fact that we played a part in it that really helped motivate everybody that we felt made a difference. So it really made us start thinking about how could we get more involved in those types of projects. Well then, you know, fast forward to a couple more, you know, another year, Dow Chemical got us involved in yet another project. And we just saw that, gosh, why is it going to take another corporation or organization to ask us to get involved in some of these major projects? So we had the opportunity where, you know, granted,
then it was after 2008, and we noticed that our funds are, are gradually improving. But we thought, well, wouldn't it be great if we could set aside a sum of money that we could say could be specifically, toward, put specifically towards a key project, working with individuals like yourselves? So that's kind of how this all got started. But I think the other big part of it all is when we presented it to the board of directors, they thought, well, gosh, this might be a good initiative for us, the board of directors, to really get our arms around. So that's why it's called the Saga Community Foundation Board of Directors Initiative, because they are the ones, even though it still comes into our office and staff plays a role in really reviewing it and so forth, but it's the board of directors that they're the ones that are actually making the decision. So that just gives you a little bit of background of where, where it all came from and how it all started. Now you have to know, as far as um, the goals, the goals behind it all, so I gave you kind of where the idea came from. Kind of the goals are, there is twofold. You know, not only do we want to help motivate individuals like yourselves to take this community into your own hands, but you know, a lot of times when it comes to, and I know some of you have faced this before, because some of you have come to Kendra or I or others in the office to say, look, I have this initiative, I've gone to other funders, but they're not willing to take a risk on me because I don't have a track record. You know, I don't, I can't show, you know, I don't, I haven't been out grant writing before. I can't show that I've received any other grants or things like that. Well, hopefully, through this initiative, that we can encourage other funders to say, you know what, maybe it is worth taking a risk to put our money towards a project or something or an organization or neighborhood that we're not very familiar with. And to be honest with you, that actually happened. You have to know that um, our board of directors reviewed six projects last year. And we, of course, awarded one of them, and I'll talk about that one in a second. But out of all of them, I mean, in, in the board of directors, they get very involved, and they, they get very passionate about the project that they're responsible for. But there was one, and there, there were a few of them, but there's one in particular, one project that one of our board members, you know, he, he was on the team that had reviewed that project. And, you know, their, his team really fought for that project. And even though it didn't get awarded, he went back to his organization and said, you know what? I think we need to look at this. I think we need to consider putting some of our organization's funds towards this project. And that's exactly what they did. So it's to help encourage other funders, whether it's in Sagan County or across the region, to look at some of these other projects that we've taken the time to take a look at. And we're more than happy to share any of the feedback or any of the information that we've gained from learning from these projects with other funders. Because that's what we do on a, on a, normal, on a regular basis anyway but it's to really encourage other funders to really look at some of these community-minded projects, some of these grassroots types of projects, and put their funds toward those, toward those activities. So those are kind of some of the other goals that we had kind of the project, not just to benefit the community foundation, or just so allow us to put our funds in the community, but to really make it a community-wide type of activity. Okay. So once again, this is a project that um, it's a community improvement project. And the definition, you have to know that when we, um, we came up with the idea, the staff and I sat down, we knew that we were gonna have to come up with a definition of what, what did we mean by community improvement. This could be very broad. And uh, the staff and I, we came up with the definition, we shared with the board, the board's like, that might work. And let me tell you, it's hard. It's really hard to really define um, you know, not, not to be so broad, but to be so more focused on what the definition is that we're looking for. So I'm going to give you the definition that we came up with, but do know that it's something that, I'm not going to say it's still in the works, but as we go through and implement this project, you know, going into our second year, as we award this grant, we may find more of a more clear definition that we want to put around this project. But at this time, because once again, however we can help enable those community initiatives to come to life, we feel at this point in time we can be a little broad with that definition, all right? But all of you will help us define that even more as we continue to award the grant. But the definition at hand right now is a community improvement project selected for funding will create indelible, measurable impacts in the immediate and broader community. The project will be supported and planned by a broad range of users ranging from businesses, to governmental entities, to neighborhoods and individuals. Selected projects will have a clear, well-laid plan for success and sustainability. The success of the project will be acknowledged and transmitted throughout the community and used as a roadmap for other successful, similar ventures. Okay? 
So very community-minded, very broad, um, crosses over many different boundaries, whether it's business, uh, organizational, nonprofit, entities, and so forth. So we're going to talk about some of your project ideas, and we hope that you will share what your project idea is, and we can kind of give you an idea of whether or not that falls within these um, criteria about the boundaries. All right? So that's the definition that we've laid out at this point in time. Now, the grant itself, we're awarding um, $25,000. And we will, if you can, and, and do know that the time frame, so February 1st, which Kendra's going to talk about too, we'll, we'll continue to repeat this and share this with you. February 1st is the deadline. The application Kendra's going to make available today. And do know we award the grant, we will make you award, we'll, we'll make the recipient award, in, uh, we'll make them aware in May will actually announce it to the community in June. But do know that actually you have a year's time frame that the project, um, you can complete your project. And by that what I mean is, if you are already fundraising for this project, any fundraising that you've completed between January 1 and the time that you are made aware that you're receiving the grant, any monies that you've raised between that time frame, can be counted as match. So if you can match the $25,000 of award of the $25,000, then we'll give you an additional $5,000. So that quickly, you could raise $55,000 towards your initiative. Okay? So you got that? So if you raise any money, even before you would learn that you've been awarded that grant, any money raised from January 1 to, say, June, will count towards match. But then you still have the remainder of the year, so in this case, 2014, to raise that match money. And that's what happened in the case of the project we just awarded this year. You have until the end of that current year to raise those matching funds to still, to still receive the, five, the additional $5,000. Does the match have to equal $25,000? Yes. Yeah, so it's got to be a one-to-one -one match. So $25 from us, you have to raise another $25 to then get another $5.
those that did or did not make it on that first reduction, I guess, of those that are going to be reviewed, they'll be notified. So you will know, yes, you've made it to the second round, or no, I'm sorry, you have not. So that will keep you updated on the process. Um, after that, our board, different people on our board, will actually take on the project, kind of adopt it, and do the, the interview, and go in and check and investigate with then the end result being they're going to present to each other. Um, so at our traditional board meeting, we get together and they'll make the presentation on the application that was submitted. And then the board will review that and they'll vote on it. And then like Renee had said, by the end of May, um, we'll have the person that was awarded will be notified and then it will be announced publicly in June. In a nutshell, that's the process. The application itself is going to be just a cover sheet with basic information, um, a budget form, which is a, a fill in the blanks, basically, and then it has a, a couple additional questions. And we're always concerned about um, sustainability of the program. That's one I've had multiple, at, oh goodness, at least four conversations today about the difference between a one-time project versus um, one that is going to fulfill immediate, but you're going to have to continue to request in order to fulfill it. Versus one time, yes, we're going to put this here, but after that it's kind of, my mom would say, set it and forget it. <laughs> is that then it will take on its own life form for years to come. That's, those are the types of things that we're going to be looking for in detail. Um, and I offer everyone that submits a grant that, and I actually encourage it that when, before you submit the grant application, I'm more than happy to look over it. And I end up just reading it because this is, this is my job. I read through these all the time and at first it was a lot to, to take care of, but then now it's just second nature. I see the questions that will come up and I can anticipate what the reviewing committees will ask. So I'll write on it just like a teacher, scan it and send it back. And then it's like how I tell my daughter, it's up to you if you'd like to make the changes, but they're just recommendations. They're by no means anything written in stone. And also review it if it's something that you're concerned about and making sure that all the paperwork is been turned in. And then as far as who can apply, um, and then once again, you'll be able to ask Kendra and I any questions, but as far as who can apply, you know, typically, you know, the Community Foundation um, usually works with uh, um, 501c3s, um, charitable organizations, municipalities, or governmental entities, um, and educational institutions. But in this case, uh, because once again, we want to make sure that the entire community, or all members in the community felt that they could participate in this, we want to, we truly want to open it up to everybody. And you're probably asking, well, how can you do that? Because when I say everybody, that includes that, those groups of individuals that I already mentioned. But we also want to include individuals, community groups, neighborhoods, businesses, and youth groups. And in all those categories, if they don't have a 501c3, that's fine, because the community foundation is willing to act as a fiscal agent for those groups. And for those of you that don't understand what I'm saying is, we will be your 501c3. So in order, though, to apply in that fashion, um, you would need to contact me, okay, and let me know what your project is, and then I will tell you if that falls within our guidelines, or within our charitable goals, that we can then act as your fiscal agent, okay? Um, and the reason that I need to make sure that we do the appropriate um, approval of that is because, you know, the Community Foundation is putting their name on the project. So in a sense, when you're filling out the application, um, the SAG the Community Foundation is a set, in a sense, then the applicant, but then it will be your project. Um, there as well, but then the community foundation would then be receiving the funds on your behalf. Okay, so we would truly be acting as your 501c3, and we would hold on to that money if you're awarded, and would be, we'd be acting as your fiscal agent. We'd hold on to that money and then pay out whatever expenses are unnecessary for you to complete the project. Okay, so those are all the applicant categories. I also just want to mention too that um, this award is awarded once a year, so okay, once again. For 2014, we'll go through the process as Kendra has indicated, 
And we'll make that announcement in June, and then that's the only award then for 2014. So we'll do that one award every year. All right. Any questions at this point? And it, and it is just for Saginaw County. So just in Saginaw County. Um, and one of the things, even though it's not truly spelled out in the actual definition of community improvement, when we say that we're looking for that broad use or broad involvement, you know, we are looking for some collaboration where possible. Okay, so if you can show that um, it does involve a broader range of individuals or groups of individuals, um, that is something that is enticing or encouraged. Okay. And I do want to mention as well, um, you have to, after we completed the process for the first time this year, uh, we then made, thought it was proper necessary to include, I mean, that the board of directors is always involved, and they select the project this year, but we felt it was necessary to actually um, create a committee, which Andre, as I mentioned earlier, he is the chair of that committee, and they met last week, and one of the things that they decided, um, a new thing that they want to do in 2014, which hasn't even been shared with everybody yet, but I'll share it with all of you, it, um, they do want to, just to make it easier for the teams, when the board teams are established, because um, you have to know, we encouraged those teams this year to go out, do all the legwork that Kendra would normally do, and really get familiar with the project, get familiar with the goals and so forth, and do those site visits. But to make it a little easier for our board members, who are very busy people, one of the things that the committee would like to do or, or, or um, implement in this process is have you, as the applicants, if you're chosen in part of that final round, that you would come to the committees and present your project to give them um, more information or help answer any questions that they may have. So that is something that we want to institute in the overall process. Okay. The next thing I want to talk about really quickly, which will give you the opportunity as well to talk about your projects, is to talk about when we, when we look at this definition or the idea of community improvement initiatives, is what are we looking for? So the 2013, just to kind of give you an idea, our recipient for 2013 was Mission in the City, okay? Now Mission in the City, as some of you might know of it, um, you know, is bigger than the project that we actually funded because we funded a, um, a, an educational curriculum for them for their younger population in that community. But actually, Mission in the City itself is, um, is a park or a fitness area that's for that entire neighborhood. And that is something you have to know when we looked at the big picture of this project, which once again, the application itself is for the educational curriculum piece or playground piece. But when we looked at what Mission in the City, what it stood for and what it actually did for that community, even though some of you might say, or if you're familiar with it, you might say, well, it really only contributes to that neighborhood, the four blocks or whatever that neighborhood. But that's not true because as, as the board members that really researched that project, as they became more familiar with it, they noticed that Mission in the City itself really draws from a larger part of the community and the impact from, from a safety standpoint, from a health standpoint, from a recreational standpoint, what it really offered that direct community, but then what it also reached, what it could reach out to in the greater community of Saginaw County and what it could offer. So, I mean, that's really what I think also enticed the board members that reviewed that and to ultimately help them make their decision. But that was our recipient um, this year, and you have to know that we gave them the $25,000 grant, and they were already in the process of raising other funds, and then we were just informed last week that they were able to raise the additional 25, so they will be getting the additional 5,000 from the community foundation. So once again, for a total of 55,000 dollars. All right. So other projects, though, that might fall within the criteria are, as I mentioned, which kind of encouraged us or motivated us to even do this initiative, are like neighborhood revitalization. Because once again, where community members themselves feel like, oh my gosh, if I could rally up neighbors in our overall neighborhood or blocks, whatever the case may be, that is a great project because you're taking your neighborhood in your own hands. Park improvements. Um, really, I say that this is the second official year, but actually um, two years ago, um, the Community Foundation had the opportunity once again to work closely with Northmore Neighborhood, um, more specifically Dyndorfer Woods Park. And, um, and, and Dyndorfer Woods had the opportunity to receive a $125,000 grant from Consumers Energy. And they, consumer, Dyndorfer came to the Community Foundation and asked if we would be their fiscal agent. So once again, here's a neighborhood or a larger neighborhood 
taking things in their own hands because they had for years been taking care of this park on their own. Um, whether it was carrying, you know, purchasing mulch, wheelbarrowing the, the mulch out there and throwing the mulch out in different parts of the park, or whether it was planting flowers, whatever the case may be. So they really showed us and the community at large that they had really taken this park in their own hands. But then for them to be up for another, for up for 125,000, Community Foundation thought, well, this is a great opportunity for us to assist them because they weren't grant writers. They didn't have those individuals or such that could do that or had the time to do that. So we were able to do that for them because in order to get to 125,000 from consumers, they had to match it with 125,000. So once again, that's where kind of we got the idea for this. So they, they raised the match, they got the 125 for consumers. So it was another great project for the Community Foundation to um, show our support to the community. So that happened two years ago, and we announced this initiative at our annual celebration at the same time we were able to show our support to Dying Door for Wood. So technically, I guess you could say that was our first project, but we hadn't really kicked off the Community Improvement Initiative. But I just want to share that one because that shows park improvements or community members getting their arms around in different parks. That's also a good example of a project that we look at. You know, or it could be major capital campaigns or um, bricks and mortar type of activities, whether it's building re restoration or housing restorations or things like that. Um, once again, we're really looking for those types of projects that can have a broader impact, that really sets an example for the larger community. Whether it touches a larger community or sets an example for the larger community. Okay. So with that, is anybody willing, um, and we have Andre here, so once again, the committee last week, they talked about, and they did say that the projects that were reviewed last year do fall within the criteria of what we're looking for. But as I mentioned in my earlier comments, we're still trying to, I don't want to say we want to narrow that definition down so specifically, but you know, we want it to be more manageable or more understood as to what we're looking for. Um, so that, you know, but we, we still have that broader focus. But is anybody willing to share what their project idea is? Um, just to kind of give us an idea of what you're all thinking. Anybody? I guess we're here together. Other two there. We, we did the one week, one street project this year on Fulton Street from Tennessee down to Bagley. And we, uh, we worked, we did, we did porches, we did roofs, we did uh, landscaping, we turned one of the empty lot that they had made out of a dumping ground into a community garden with raised bed gardens. We had multiple, uh, a lot of collaboration. Uh, Tamara might be able to tell you more of the groups. Uh, you know, it was United Methodist Church. 18 uh, different churches. 18 Great different churches. So this year we are, we're gonna move up to Harrow Street uh, on Genesee, between Genesee, and we're gonna also finish some things that we didn't have the funds to do uh, on Fulton last year. Uh, since we did those uh, projects and and uh, moved some of the uh, light from the community, we, we were in a meeting with the state trooper and police officers, and they said that the crime rate had really dropped in that area. Uh, it really had made a difference, and then, you know, with the demolition of the, the houses, so we do plan to do more gardens out of the vacant lots this year. So that's pretty much it. The area of Saginaw has uh, had uh, an unprecedented drop in crime, 20 to 20, 25 percent, uh, and it's on parallel in any other part of the city. That's what happened. It's an area called South Park, uh, in addition to Saginaw, about 38 blocks. And so we're claiming all 38 blocks to finish. Strategic plan gives us seven years to do it, and so. We're here looking to see how much assistance, <laughs> <laughs> partnership, and collaboration we get from community foundation. Great. And also, we're trying to put the park to uh, Tamara might can explain that. Yeah, we're trying to get a small neighborhood park. There's a lot of kids in the neighborhood, but not, not any place to go that's safe. Um, other than crossing a large street and going maybe a mile down the road. Um, also, um, Pastor Roy has a youth center. Um, that we didn't have the funds to complete last year, but um, it's close, and it's for uh, kids from Saginaw High to get uh, homework help, tutoring, have access to computers and printers, 
and um, it's within walking distance of the high school and a safe place for teens to hang out. So we're also looking to help finish that. Anybody else? And you don't have to, I mean, if you can share your project or if you have specific questions on your project and whether or not you feel it fits. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I, and, uh, just as a disclosure, I, I, I used to work with Renee here at the Screen Foundation. So I, I kind of have a sense of what you mean when you're, you know, when you talk about the community and, and sustainable projects. Um, and, and with that, I, I can see it's, you know, th this grant is not for my tech plus that I came here to visit uh, uh, with, but, um, but it is inspiring a different idea that I've had uh, since 2005, since our leadership Saginaw uh, class genie. And, and, uh, and it would require the help of STARS. Uh, uh, and so I, you know, I, you know I, I don't know if I want to go into a lot of detail right now, but, but, it, it, but it, it is going to require a little bit of work and more groundwork than, than I expected. But that's the beauty, I think, of meetings like this, is that you know, I, I don't see this grant working for my company, but, uh, uh, but now I don't have to waste any time writing an application. <laughs> well, maybe you will. You can bring your other idea to life. Yes. 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 <laughs> I know you. Anybody else want to share? Well, I'll talk a little bit for stars. Sure. Um, we're here trying to have, bring the initiative forward that I'm an educational piece. We are the only transit agency in the area, including Bay and Midland, that is not countywide. And we were given the initiative by the county commissioners to go out and do an education piece in each of the districts. So what we're trying to do is maybe use this grant to help get out and get brochures and do grassroots and go in and let people understand transportation <coughs> is not just a large bus that you see going down the road here in the city. There's many different modes of transportation. It can be a car, it can be a van, and it's a quality of life issue, it's sustainability. Our, our community has changed so drastically that even um, someone or a young family trying to have two partners working, it's a stretch to have two cars for people to get to, to, get to work. We have had to cut Saturday service back um, going on two years ago, and we are still getting calls asking, can we please return that service? I think our community needs transportation, just like Midland, just like Bay. So that's what brings me here, is to see if this initiative would work with the grant and um, help kind of writing that grant. Mm -hmm. sure. I, I, I can ask any question you want. You said $25,000 grant, and we have to match that in the organization or? or you don't have to. If you want to receive the additional five thousand, so you get a total of thirty-five or thirty from the community foundation, then you would need to raise the match of twenty-five thousand. But you don't have to. If we, if you are selected and you get twenty-five thousand in the grant, and you don't have to raise an additional twenty-five if you don't have. If twenty-five meets your needs, then that's fine. Now I don't know if I, what, what, where, 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 we work in the very GI forum in the veterans group in Saginaw, Michigan, located on Oak Creek. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that. And what we stand for, we stand for education as well as veterans. You know, we have many retiree, I mean, many veterans that have come through uh, what, the Korean War and et cetera. And uh, we have in the past given out scholarships. And our building, which is, like I said, open, is falling apart. And we uh, just took out a loan to get a furnace because I mean, the furnace totally died down. And uh, we have to have a new kitchen renovation. And I'm thinking on D as in the building, you know, working with mortar. That might come under that mm -hmm. subject. So uh, I thought maybe we could put in a grant for that to see if it's giving any help in that area. And like I said, we do have a big function <coughs> at the Horizon called Caesar Chalice. Mm -hmm. And that's once a year, of course. And what well, we have to pay, we have to put pay all the money, of course, for, you know, to pay uh, for the meals and dinner. And then after we pay everything out, then the proceeds go, everything goes directly to scholarships. And, but then we start with zero, so, you know, we don't have a lot of money in our account because we are just giving out scholarships. And like I said, that building is in dire need of fixing. And then there's a building right next door to it that has, uh, we're talking about blight, 
that it looks like it, when they, they left, it's desolate. You know, I mean, it's a terrible um, repair, and I wish they could knock that down because it makes our building look even worse. And it's dangerous. We have had tutoring in the past, you know, from the high school. That was before I, I joined the program, and students would come to our school and get tutored. And uh, we had computer classes going on, and, all, and that has been saved up because of the money. So that's what I'm working on, just to get some more general information to see if there's anyone who can get help with the furnace slash kitchen slash, because we have three stories. So I'm, all we can afford is the third story, the third floor, because there's a renter we have up there, and the first floor. The second floor will be <laughs> alone for now. And that is good. I mean, so bricks and mortar, definitely. I mean, let me, and another way to really differentiate, because um, Kendra mentioned that she's in charge of um, unrestricted competitive grant making process. So on a quarterly basis, we accept applications as well. And typically, I mean, not to say that we don't receive some applications for even some capital type things there, but typically, you know, in, the, in those quarterly cycles, we're looking for more programmatic type of things to help charitable organizations. Once again, we're broadening this activity by really focusing on other groups and activities, but um, so our quarterly type of cycles are usually um, focused more on those programmatic type of activities. So more capital, bricks and mortar, where they have a big impact. So in your case, if you're touching veterans, you're touching um, a various broader range um, uh, individuals across the community, Definitely that falls within the criteria. Okay. Now, as far as grant writing, uh, do you ever get a class on that? Well, I'm going to talk about that here. It's on the agenda. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm just going to jump down to that really um, one second here. Um, so future workshops. So last year when we did this workshop, and let me just mention that this session is being videotaped. And um, Brian um, Kaneshka, who you met earlier, he will have this on our website. So if, you, if there's something you may have missed, do know that you can go back to our website and see this session recorded. And there will also be some Q&As. Um, there have just been some question and answers that we've had, that we've received and answered over the past year, whether it was at this workshop a year ago or just over the past year. So those Q&As will be on the website as well. But another thing that we learned last year is um, at this workshop was we asked, you know, in order to help you, if you really want to take this initiative seriously and follow through with it, what other resources or activities could the Community Foundation offer you to help you be more successful? And um, one of the um, items mentioned was somebody said, well, could you do a grant writing workshop? So we did do a grant writing workshop last year, and um, that's something that we could do again this year. It would be free. So it would be a free workshop to give you some of those grant writing tips. All right, so once again, just give some basic tips. But well, something that I know Kendra's mentioned and I mentioned as well, something that you can do to become familiar, and really um, this can help you with any type of grant, that whether it's um, a grant that you're submitting to say First Merit or any of the private foundations, but become familiar with our competitive grant application that's on our website. Um, because that really, the things that we're looking for in that application, um, it really outlines it for you what you should include in any application. But you can even become familiar with that. But um, as far as you know, putting it all together and so forth, definitely we'll let you know um, and we'll try and schedule that early on. We don't have a date for you right now because really this workshop right here was really key to make sure that we kicked off um, this process for everybody. But um, we'll probably shortly after the holidays um, schedule a grant writing workshop once again free to, um, to bring in, um, to give you some of the basics as to how to put together a grant. Okay, we'll tie it back to our application. What we did last year, and I'd like to do again, is we brought in Janet Wrench from Saginaw Valley State University, who's one of the local experts on grant writing. But she's at a very high end. I mean, she's written a lot of federal and state level grants and so forth. So she can give you some basics as far as that goes. And then Kendra would, once again, tie it back to our application and make sure that you're hitting um, hitting in on some of the key areas of our grant application so you don't miss anything there, okay? So that is something that we would offer, um, and we'll offer that shortly after the, after the holidays. And then another one that was requested, and we're open to this once we get to the Q&A, as far as other resources that you find beneficial, but because we do encourage, it's not required, but something that we encourage as well is collaboration. And it's glad to hear, you know, kind of your comments saying, you know, maybe it doesn't help out with your project that you came here to, um, talk about, but maybe there's some other projects that you could tie in other people or either around this table or other organizations or individuals in the community. 
if you feel that that's something that you can include, once again, if it, if, if it benefits two organizations, two neighborhoods, two groups, whatever the case may be, believe me, as a funder, that helps, that makes us feel like we're spreading our dollar that much further, okay? But it was requested last year to help people have a better understanding of what do we mean by collaboration. <coughs> So we did a quick presentation on, cl on collaboration last year as well, just to give you a good understanding of what we mean with that. But if there are other things that we've either mentioned today or you feel like beneficial, let us know. We'll see if we can um, do a workshop.